Have you got a last minute baby gift to buy? Why not knit this simple and adorable hat instead? It can be made in just an evening and you only need very basic knitting skills to make it. So keep watching to find out just how easy it is. Hi guys, it's Kat here from knitcatpaddywhack.com. I'm a knitwear designer and a blogger and I like to share simple tutorials for beginner knitters or people who just don't have all that much time to knit. And I'm really excited today to share with you a tutorial for how to make this really cute little garter stitch hat. So it's very basic. Mostly it uses um, garter stitch and then a little bit of ribbing down below. If you can see that there. So all you'll need is the knit stitch, the purl stitch and the ability to cast on and cast off and make some little pom-poms. And there's just some basic seaming as well. And this hat here is in the newborn size and I'll be demonstrating how to make the newborn sized hat but on my blog, which I will post the link to the post in the de description down below, there will be instructions for how to make a 6 month and a 12 month size as well. So keep watching if you want to find out how to make this really cute hat. To make this pattern you're going to need a few basic things which you've probably got already. The first one is some yarn. So this pattern is, is designed using a 8 ply yarn. I am using a really cheap yarn that I found at my local $2 shop. Um, I would recommend really if this is going to be worn by a baby and not lined with fabric to use uh, a specially designed baby yarn. And I would also suggest being a young mother myself to get something that is machine washable. So. Get super wash wool if you're going to use wool. You're also going to need some needles. So I have some 3.75 millimeter needles because that is how I designed the pattern using that gauge. But obviously you will need to do your own tension or gauge swatch to find out what is the size of needles that you're going to need to get the right tension for this pattern. And you're going to need something to make pom-poms. Now, I, I'm going to use a fork. You can use it basically your favorite method of using a pom-pom, of making a pom-pom. Uh, but I tried this out for this pattern and I thought it worked really well. I won't go into detail about how you do it, but I will um, just, when we get to that point, let you know how I did it. And I will post a more detailed tutorial um, down below that someone else has done for how to make a pom-pom using a fork. And you'll also, of course, need a darning needle and a good pair of craft scissors. And that is all you're going to need to make this little square baby hat. So, I'm demonstrating, like I said, using the uh, newborn size. So I'm going to be casting on 72 stitches. So. Now you want to use a cast on that is stretchy. So I usually use a long tail. I think that it's really simple. The only drawback is I often, uh, I'm not very good at estimating how long the tail should be and I end up having to collect some more yarn from the other side of the ball to make it work. But we'll start off by casting on our 72. And I do, I do my long tail cast on, as you might have noticed, with two needles held together because that just makes it looser. And I've cast on too many, so that's better than casting on not enough and then running out of yarn, I suppose. Okay, so I have my 72 stitches, and I'll just pull one needle out, and then we can start on row one. So what we're going to do for the first six rows for the newborn size is to work in a 2x2 two two rib. 
So what that means, if you're unfamiliar with it, is you just do uh, two knit stitches and then two purl stitches and you just repeat that. So I'm going to be working six rows like this. If you were to do the six month old size, you would be doing eight rows. And if you're doing the 12 month old size, you do 10 rows. So we'll, I'll stop the video now and come back once I have worked my six rows for the ribbing because you don't need to see me do that for minutes and minutes. Okay, so I've worked my six rows in the two by two rib <clears throat> and the next step is really easy and it's the last of the knitting you're going to have to do is to just work in garter stitch. For the newborn size you're going to work 56 rows, for the six month size 62 rows and for the 12 month size you'll be doing 68 rows. So I think that this would be a really good pattern for a beginner knitter. Um, so let's say you are an intermediate or advanced knitter and you're quite happy to do the two by two rib but you're teaching someone to knit who can only do garter stitch. Well you can knit just the edging, this um, ribbing on the hat and then hand the needles over to your student and they can go from there and, and knit the rest of the hat. So I'm going to be knitting my 56 rows in garter stitch. Okay, so I have worked my garter stitch rows and as you can see it's sort of, if you can imagine the hat in half, you can sort of imagine how that's roughly the proportions of a beanie. Um, it's just that it's got a square top so the top of the head will be here and the crown will go around like that. So the next step is just to simply cast off or bind off if you're in America. And just for beginners who are doing this project, or if you're teaching a beginner with this project, one thing that I've noticed beginners sometimes do is they cast off or bind off very tightly, too tightly. And the problem with that is that it will bunch up the fabric. So just be aware of that. Make sure you leave a little bit of slack when you bind off or cast off. So. If you're not used to casting off, let me just show you how it's done very simply. So you just start off by knitting two stitches and then you take the first stitch you knit and pass it over the next one. So we need to leave enough slack because every stitch has to stretch over the next stitch. So it needs to be a little bit looser than how we were knitting it. So. Just like before, we knit another stitch and pass the previous stitch over and we do that until we get to the end. So I have cast off all of my stitches and you can see I didn't do it very tightly so it's fairly square along the top level with the side of the garter stitch uh, rows that I was doing. So the next step is to cut a tail. I want to cut a fairly generous tail because I'm going to be using it to sew up the seam. So you know, eight inches, something like that, which is about 20 centimetres. And I've got my last live stitch, just past 
that tail through the last live stitch to fasten it off. Oops. There we go. Now the next step is to do the seaming. So it's really simple. What we're going to do is work a flat seam down here, down the back seam of the hat. So that's the, the row edges. Once we've done that, we'll work a whip stitch along the top. So I will link a tutorial down below for how to do a, a nice, neat seam for garter stitch, because I must say, seaming is not my strong point. Um, and then I will, but I will show you how I do it. And um, we'll do a whip stitch for the top, which is a really simple stitch. And it's something that kids can, um, understand pretty easily. So the way I do a seam for a garter stitch is I just gather up uh, two of the little bumps. So I've got one bump and another bump. So that's two stitches on one side and I gather it up and then I take the corresponding two bumps on the other side and sew down. And I just do that all the way down. Make sure it's not too tight and not too loose. So about, make it about as tight as the knitting that you were doing. And then it should look pretty nice. as a nice, neat seam once the hat's being worn. So I've worked about half of this seam now and this step is totally optional but I just like it because I think that um, it avoids the possibility of having little the little ends of your yarn sticking out from the bottom of the hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop using this tail now, I'll just weave it in. I'll post a tutorial for how to weave in ends as well in the comments down below because I'm not sure if it's very clear with this uh, multicoloured yarn that I'm using. So I'll just cut that off and then I'm going to work a seam from the cast on tail up and to meet it in the middle. And you certainly don't have to do it this way, but I find that it, um, yeah, eliminates the risk of having a little fluffy row end sticking out. And because this is a reversible stitch, the ribbing and the garter stitch are both reversible. It doesn't matter which side is the wrong side. I meant to mention that before. So you can just really seam on any either side, kind of arbitrary. Okay, so now I just need to weave in the last end here. got myself a nice tube. So the next step is to make sure we've got this seam, uh, we'll turn it inside out, so right side out. You can see I've got a seam there. Fairly neat, it could be a little bit less visible but I think that that's fine. And we're going to make sure this seam is centered. And we're going to take some yarn and work a whip stitch along the top. So let's say we got probably got about two and a half feet, but that's probably a lot more than we need, but it's nice to have more rather than less. So 
I'll thread the needle through it. So what I like to do with this is I find my corner that I'm going to start from and just below it is where I'm going to weave in the first end. So pull the tail almost all the way through and then just weave in through a few stitches in both directions. And then we've got the yarn nice and secure. Just check that that's still centered. Okay, so I think that the easiest stitch to use to seam the top is a whip stitch. And that is simply going over the top of the knitting. And I think this is, like I say, very simple for a new knitter to understand. You don't need to be terribly precise and it still looks uh, really neat, I think. So just work our whip stitch all the way along. Okay, that's our whip stitch all the way along the top. You can see it's fairly neat. Hopefully, I think it's fairly neat. So our last step is for the hat before we put the pom-poms on, is to hide the tail inside the hat. So we'll pull it through into a corner and just flip the hat inside out. And all we do is just weave in this end and cut it off. Nice and simple. There we have it. So if you like, you can just leave the hat as it is. Just um, give it a quick steam because it's acrylic or you can give it a block as well. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will post some tutorials down below for how to finish knitted items. But what I like to do is to put a couple of little pom-poms on the sides. So I will... Um, show you how you can make a pom-pom from a fork and it makes just the perfect size little pom-poms for this hat. You simply take a fork and around the middle of the tines you just wrap your yarn. So I'm going to wrap my yarn a hundred times around the fork. Once you've cut, you've wrapped your yarn around enough times, and I think a hundred makes a nice thick pom pom. You cut the tail. Now you cut another length of yarn. Say you want to do at least six inches, or um, um, or fifteen centimeters, and you thread it through the bottom of the fork there we go that was harder than it needed to be <laughs> and then through the middle uh, hole the middle gap so after the second time and then you just tie it up really tight as hard as you can And then what we're going to do is cut down the both sides of the fork, so down this side and this side, and that will release the 
yarn and make a pom pom. So I would advise not cutting through too many at once, just take your time. So once you've cut them all off, you've released all of the strands and all you have to do now is just pull it up and you've got yourself a fairly rough pom-pom, but you can then cut it down to make a nice neat ball. Make yourself two of them and cut them nice and neat, neater than I did, I'm not terribly good at cutting neat pom-poms, but you've got your two little toppers for your hat. So they go. Here, yeah, so basically all you do is you thread the two tails that you tied the pom-pom together with through each corner and then weave in both ends and cut them short and then you've got your hat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And there you have it, a really cute little pom-pom topped square gala hat. And it knits up pretty quickly. Uh, it's You can do it in an evening in front of a, a movie, I think. And I will post down below a link to the blog post which has this pattern on it in the newborn size, which is this size, the si a six-month-old size and a 12-month-old size. And if you liked this sort of tutorial. I'm hoping to post one or two videos a week. This is only my second video. And please like and subscribe just to let me know that this is the sort of thing that you'd like to see. I guess my aim for this channel is to make knitting accessible to all those people who say that they can only knit garter stitch or can only knit a rectangle and also for beginners and people who are learning to knit. I especially would love to foster a love of knitting in our younger generations. So Yes, let me know if you like this down below and I will link to some useful tutorials and the blog post where you can find this written pattern in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.